I'm Susan Dragoo. We're in Fort Smith, Arkansas, at the confluence of the Arkansas and the Poteau Rivers. Looking across the Poteau River, we are seeing Oklahoma. In 1858, this was the departure point from Arkansas into Indian Territory as the first Butterfield Overland Mail stagecoach made its 2,800 mile journey from Tipton, Missouri to San Francisco, California. Things look a lot different here than they did 165 years ago when that first stage came through. For one thing, they came through in the middle of the night, stopping in Fort Smith at 2.05 a.m. to join the mail from St. Louis with the mail from Memphis, Tennessee onto one stage that was to continue all the way to the west coast. Also, this quiet spot was actually a busy ferry landing at the time, and steamboats were coming and going just up the way because Fort Smith was a thriving center of commerce. Being on that first stagecoach and crossing from the United States into Indian Territory would have been a big leap into the unknown for passengers, anticipating not only going through the Choctaw and Chickasaw nations, but also the less settled areas of West Texas, New Mexico and Arizona and California. And while that first stagecoach actually forded the Poteau River to get across to Indian Territory, that's obviously not something we're able to do today. We'll travel a few miles down the road to make that crossing on a bridge. The cold spring water at Walker Station is so refreshing and it's made even better by the knowledge that it comes from the same source that travelers on the Overland Mail stages drank from when they stopped here to change horses at Walker Station 14 miles from Fort Smith. This is the first station the westbound stage encountered in the Indian Territory. There were 12 stations along this segment of the route, most of them at the homes of Choctaw or Chickasaw citizens. They were about 16 miles apart with a team of fresh horses hitched up at each stop. The station keeper here was Tandy Walker, who was governor of the Choctaw Nation at the time, and helped hitch up the team. Before Tandy Walker lived here, this was the Choctaw Agency, established in 1832. And the use of this spring in recorded history goes back to those days, but it probably also quenched the thirst of the ancient people who built the Spiro Mounds just a few miles to the north, on the south bank of the Arkansas River. From here, the trail continues southwest in a diagonal towards the Red River through Oklahoma's Lafleur, Latimer, Pittsburgh, Atoka, and Bryan counties. We pass Traherne Station and soon arrive at the only structure still standing along the trail which coexisted with the Overland Mail, and that's the Edwards Store. The cabin began as a single log structure about 1850. The logs were hand-hewn from pines harvested from the nearby forest placed on a foundation of stacked sandstone. In 1870, a second log room was constructed to the west and connected with the original cabin by a covered passageway, creating the dog trot style two-room cabin common to the era. Today, there's an active restoration project underway to preserve this historic structure. We've been in somewhat mountainous territory since we left Walker Station, passing through a narrow valley south of Brazil Creek Soon the road will pass out of that valley through the Narrows, where Holloway's station was located. From there, it goes through present-day Red Oak and nearly due west to the eastern edge of Wilburton to Riddle's station. It soon veered southwest again, ascending Blue Mountain to the site of Mountain Station. This was a small relay station, but it has a very interesting history and the dubious honor of being the location of the only Butterfield stagecoach accident which took the life of a passenger. It also had a big impact on the future of the man who is considered the grandfather of motion pictures, Edward Mybridge. On July 2, 1860, Mybridge boarded the Butterfield stagecoach in San Francisco, heading east to ultimately travel back to his native England. On the evening of July 20th, 18 days into the trip, the stagecoach wagon with eight passengers met with an accident just after departing a station. The brake was out of order and a horse was obstinate. The team started in a run, going down a hill full tilt, out of control. The brake being useless, the stage struck a tree and was smashed to pieces. All of the passengers were hurt badly, including Mybridge, who received a severe head injury. Mybridge recovered from his head injury and years later, 
invented stop-motion photography, a precursor to motion pictures. There's speculation that the head injury changed his personality significantly, making him more obsessive and perhaps more creative. Would he have been the grandfather of motion pictures if he hadn't had the head injury? We'll never know. Beyond Mountain Station, the Stagecoach Road runs through Tye Valley to Blackburn Station, crosses Brushy Creek, and continues to Waddell Station. These roads, even today, are very isolated and virtually all unpaved. In many places, the modern county roads parallel or lace back and forth across the old Stagecoach Road. From Waddell, the road crosses McGee Creek and traverses what is now the Atoka Wildlife Management Area, coming out near Stringtown, then heading to Lake Atoka. The next station, Geary's, was inundated when the Atoka Reservoir was built in the late 1950s. On Highway 69, just north of Atoka, there's a stretch of the old stagecoach road at the Atoka County Museum and Confederate Cemetery. Then the trail goes west toward Boggy Depot. Boggy Depot was once the biggest town on the road from Fort Smith to the Red River and served as the Choctaw capital at times. It was also the home of the Reverend Allen Wright, who served as principal chief of the Choctaws and who famously suggested the name Oklahoma for the territory, Oklahoma being a Choctaw phrase meaning red people. Today, Boggy Depot is a recreation area managed by the Chickasaws, and the only significant remnant of the old days is the historic cemetery. There's also interpretive signage around the park to indicate the sites of historic buildings. From Boggy Depot, the road heads south towards the Nail Crossing Station on the Blue River. Continuing west, you'd find Fort Washita, established in 1842 to protect the Chickasaws from threats of the Plains Indians to the west. The Fort Washita historic site is also owned by the Chickasaws and is one of the more beautiful military sites in Oklahoma. Instead of taking the detour west of Fort Washita, however, the Butterfield continued south, stopping at Fisher's Station and crossing into the Chickasaw Nation then arriving at Colbert's Ferry on the Red River, its last stop in the Indian Territory. The life of the Butterfield Overland Mail was not quite three years. About the time of the outbreak of the Civil War, the Overland Mail was moved to a more northern route. It was quickly followed by the Pony Express, the Transcontinental Telegraph, and four years after the Civil War, the Transcontinental Railroad was finally completed. But the Butterfield Overland Mail legend lives on. It's now been designated a National Historic Trail, and here in Oklahoma, there's much to see along the way. Oklahoma historian Muriel Wright said, For one who will follow the traces of the old stage line road from Fort Smith to Red River, bearing in mind the part it had in the history of Oklahoma and other sections of the Southwest, there still lingers something of the spirit of Indian Territory days. All these years later, the road is no longer a continuous, discrete pathway, but abides nonetheless and something of that same spirit of Indian Territory days does indeed still linger. As I have followed those traces of the old stage line, I have seen the faded scars on the land, a swale through a pasture, a cut down creek bank, a path worn bare through the forest. In forgotten places, stone lined wells still stand near the rubble of rock buildings and graveyards of broken tombstones. With each passing year, these few tangible remains of the Butterfield crumble and disappear. This portal to a different time is closing in a physical sense, disintegrating as earthly things do. But the story of Oklahoma's Butterfield Trail offers a journey through time back to Indian Territory's antebellum days as concrete and steel dissolve into wagon ruts, hewn logs, and flowing springs. Thanks for joining us on this journey through time as we've traveled along the Butterfield Trail through Indian Territory from Fort Smith, Arkansas to the Red River. Discover your trail in Oklahoma.